Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to show you and guide you through the creation process of a travel map or any kind of map in Mixbook's brand new map creator feature. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you like what you see, give this video a thumbs up. So Mixbook, the photobook giant, just um, added a new feature to their editor besides lots of other AI features that I'm going to talk about in a different video. But the, the feature I want to talk about today and show you is the map creator feature. And the reason why this is really cool and important to me personally is because obviously I had my own map editor that I had to shut down uh, roughly a month ago. And I know I had a lot of people who were left without maps. And now here is one option for you to use if you want to continue creating maps for your photo books. So obviously you can only create these maps if you buy a Mixbook photo book. You can't export it and use it in different photo book editors or different photo books by other companies. So let's have a look. I'm inside the Mixbook editor, the new one, and I'm inside a project where I have some pictures from Africa from a safari. And if I come here to this page, this would be a perfect place for me to add a map. So how does it work? In the bottom here now, you can see a new menu option, which is maps, and it says beta. So it's kind of in the early stages. I hope it's gonna offer even more features than it does now. Here you can see the map styles offered at the moment, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different kind of color schemes. You've got some different fonts on them as well, and some of them have slightly more detail than others. The map editor is not extremely detailed, but it does offer you quite some flexibility when creating single points or actual travel journeys and itineraries. So what do you need to do? First of all, you need to drag one of these onto the page. So let's start with maybe this one here, which looks like Google Maps. So all I need to do is drag it onto my page where I want it to be. And you can resize it now or you can resize it um, at the very end. It doesn't really matter. And now when you click on the map, you have to start adding a location. So let's just assume that these pictures were taken in the Gorongoro National Park. So I'm going to add, and it already comes up with options here. I assume it's pulling it from Google Maps and I'm going to click on it. And now it's going to center my map around that point that I just pinpointed. Basically, that's the simplest way of using a map. So if you want to show where these pictures were taken, you can just add one point to the map and center it or make it full screen and you've got your point. There's certain things you can do with the map. If you click on it and you would like to zoom out a bit, you have to click on resize this button here. And now you have the plus minus button so you can zoom out a bit to, to maybe show the entire country or even the entire continent, you know, you, as much as you want to show, or you can even zoom in more and show the crater in much more detail, but obviously it doesn't show any kind of uh, topography. So you wouldn't see like mountains and stuff like that. Now you can also move it up and down to center it. And then when you're done, just click finish the resize. Now things you can't do, you can't highlight areas, you can't change the color or the font of specific items. So this is basically all the customizability that you can have with the maps within one theme. And also if you want to change the text, you can change that. So it says here names, you can change this to Angorongoro National Park, and you can even add the date, like, I don't know, 20th May 2023. And you can just um, change the titles to, you know, make it more specific. But again, I can't move the text higher and now it's overlapping the, the little icon. So that's the simplest way of creating a one point map. And now if I click on the other styles, you can see that it changes the font and the whole color scheme. And some of them look really cool. Some of them look kind of antique like this one here. It looks like a pirate map almost. And then you've got this kind of uh, minimalist one. So lots of options here to choose from. Now let's have a look at another option where I might want to create an itinerary. So let's say I did a tour around uh, Tanzania and let's say that I started in um, Zanzibar and then I went to Arusha and Serengeti National Park. There we are. 
and maybe we also went to Dares, the capital. And now I have all these locations on the map. Let's just zoom out a little bit and let's connect these locations. So I can connect these locations with straight lines, but now you can see it looks a bit messy because it doesn't follow the correct order. So I can come back to edit my locations. I started in Zanzibar, so I'm going to move this to drag and move it to the top and then the capital and then Arusha, Gorongoro and Serengeti. And if I go back now, it's connected in a more <laughs> normal way. And I've got two ways to connect these points. One is with straight lines, as you can see here. And the second one is the road, which basically if, if I would take off Zanzibar city, it would find the, the, the shortest road distance between these cities, but because one of them is an island, it, it can't do anything about it. So it just didn't connect them at all. But let's see if I zoom in a little bit and I take off Zanzibar city. And then there you go. You can see there is a roadmap now between all these cities. Now let's just make this um, full screen, fill the page and let's zoom in a little bit because there's a lot of overlapping happening there. And that's better. Now, as you can see, you, you've got, again, quite a lot of flexibility when creating itineraries. You can rearrange the locations. You can connect them with a straight line or a road, but you can't use uh, like flight paths, for example, and you can't modify or change the path. So you can't change where the, where the line goes. If there's a little bit of overlapping, again, you can't move the text, but you can zoom in and zoom out if that offers you a little bit more flexibility or a cleaner look. Now, if you want to, you know, add some stuff to the map that's not within the map creator itself, you can. So if you come to the stickers and let's find a safari car or Jeep, right? Let's use this one so I can put it over and I can put it here so you can see that it's a safari and let's also add some animals. So I'm going to add some elephants. Let's pick something less kitty and let's add a giraffe and let's add a little um, text. Our African safari adventure and here is a little funky map. So I hope this little tutorial, I didn't want to make it too long, gave you a little bit of insight uh, into the capabilities of the map creator in Mixbooks editor. Uh, as you can see, you can create single points uh, for pinpointing the photos on the specific spread, or you can create actual itineraries and using Mixbooks stickers library, you can embellish it with lots of different things. You can also add more text. If I wanted to add a little bit of text to Arusha, I could do that. I could add some dates with the text tool, but um, the main things you can't change is the path and you can't move the text around and you can't change the colors unless you change a different style, but that's going to change everything on the map and you have no control over that. If you have any more questions about this editor, you can leave your questions in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and as always, subscribe for more.